assalamu alaikum everybody uh today we are going to talk about uh the last second last and third classification of uh antidepressants which is monoamine oxidase inhibitors so let's start we have covered up so far ssris snris tcas uh five uh, serotonin receptor antagonist and today we are going to cover up monoamine oxidase inhibitors and the next class would be atypical heterocyclic antidepressants which would mark end of the topic of antidepressants uh one very amazing thing to know about uh the antidepressants is this and specifically the class that we are going to study today is monoamine oxidase inhibitors so you see the, the this is the first first ever drug that was um made in order to treat depression right and uh just imagine now we don't use it at all uh, mono uh, monoamine oxidase inhibitors are used as second line of drugs and not the first line of drug because of, it's never the first choice to treat depression because of the side effects it offers right uh side effects plus adverse effects which we will be studying today so you see following uh, world war 2 large amounts of rocket fuel hydrazine was given to pharmaceutical industry so in 1952 isoniazid derived from hydrazine uh, was found to have anti uh, tubercular properties isoniazid was used to have mood elevating properties and then later on uh, the drugs were discovered from hydrazine and non hydrazine structures right okay so uh it's very important that you know that what are the medications that actually cause depression so that includes retin a interferon corticosteroids uh varenicline uh it is used to treat nicotine addiction and then we have finasteride which is used to treat hair loss and then we have progesterone progesterone <clears throat> which is an oral contraceptive and then we have alcohol and then we have opioids so you see all of these drugs can actually promote depression so use it with care again you see a depressed person would in would exhibit no interest in any thing at all okay whatever is going in the surrounding they don't they won't care at all and the person who is not depressed you see their um brain activity would be functioning they would be um they, they would be talking about their likes and dislikes however the people who are depressed they won't uh, you know they won't speak about their likes and dislikes and even if something would be happening in front of them which they are disliking they would say okay let it happen because we don't care anymore and this attitude usually develops when you experience an immense trauma right uh, an immense trauma that has uh, affected you emotionally and when i say emotionally that means we have much more percentage of women who are diagnosed with depression as compared to men because uh, we women tend to be the emotional drama queens okay so because of which approximately 70% of the diagnosed uh, patients who have major depression like clinical depression they are women and only 30% are men uh so this is something which we need to identify uh, and it means we need to take care if uh, you know certain events are happening which can affect someone right okay again i would want you to memorize every bit of this slide i can literally like delete or cover up these and then give you in the exam to label these okay and these are very much important so you should memorize it by heart okay all right again my favorite i think in every lecture i have shown you the structures uh in the uh, in third semester we also talked about how exactly um the biosynthesis looks like but then i don't know why i felt that maybe you people have forgotten it 
because I saw that there was no activity on my YouTube channel where you guys were looking at the previous uh, videos. So I was like, wow, everybody in my class has super memory, which is not humanly. So I thought to inculcate in my slide again. Anyways, guys, so you see here, this is the first precursor. This is the hero of, uh, you know, of all of the compounds. And this is what we need in order to make all of the important uh, bi uh, biogenic amines that are needed by our body in order to be happy, in order to be motivated, right? Okay, so you see this phenyl aniline, okay. Uh, you, okay, guys, first of all, uh, I want you to please look here, okay. See here, this OH, this OH, this OH, this OH, <laughs> this OH, this OH, right? Can anybody tell me that what was the ring's name which has two OH attached to it? I, I, I do remember that I taught you this in the last, in third semester. Can you guys uh, recall your memory and then tell me? Awesome, Tanzila. Very good. Very good. So this is catechol ring. Okay, guys, this is very much important that you, you know that this is catechol ring, right? Eight second. All right. Now, you see, uh, we have catechol ring, okay? And then you see this NH2 is a mine, okay? And if you remember, in my last lecture, I told you guys that we need biogenic amines and biogenic amines are those uh, which are which have catechol ring along with amine group in it, okay? So we need catechol amines for our body to function, to be motivated and all, all right? Okay, so you see here, this phenyl aniline is being converted into tyrosine, right? And then you see this OH group is added. And then furthermore, one more OH group is added right on the third position. Uh, and then uh, later on, it was decarboxylated. Uh, you see here, carboxyl group is removed. And then Later on, uh, the dopa was converted into dopamine, and then this dopamine was converted into norepinephrine by adding an OH group here. And then later on, if we add methyl group here, so the norepinephrine is being converted into epinephrine. Um, I think it is important for you to memorize the basic aspect of it. I'm not saying to memorize every bit of it, but it is important for you to know how exactly <coughs> the chemicals look like that are working in your body, right? Okay, so today we're going to talk about how exactly monoamine oxidase inhibitors, you see, when we are saying monoamine oxidase inhibitors, it means that um, there is an enzyme called monoamine oxidase, okay, which is actually cleaving this, okay, which is metabolizing this within the which is metabolizing the uh, norepinephrine and epinephrine within the neuron. And that is why when we are taking monoamine oxidase inhibitor, it means the concentration of epinephrine and norepinephrine will be more in the uh, synaptic cleft, right? Okay. So first of all, let's talk about monoamine oxidase. So it's a mitochondrial enzyme found in nerve and other tissues such as gut and liver. Um, okay, in the neuron, it functions as a safety valve to oxidatively deaminate and inactivate any excess neurotransmitter molecules uh, that may leak out of the synaptic vesicles when the neuron is at rest, right, everybody? So as I said, monoamine oxidase job is to uh, metabolize the biogenic amines, right? Okay, so you see there are two types of monoamine oxidase, uh, which is isoenzyme A and then isoenzyme B, all right? Okay, so you see monoamine oxidase A 
is uh, going to metabolize serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine, and then tyramine. However, monamine B uh, metabolizes dopamine, phenylethylamine, right? Uh, about monamine B, we have, we should know that within the brain, okay, if serotonin levels are uh, super high, so monamine oxidase B would also metabolize serotonin within the brain, okay? So when we talk about location of monamine oxidase A and B, so A is present in brain, gut, liver, placenta, and skin. However, B is present in brain, platelets, and lymphocytes. Uh, now let's talk about classification. You see, we have, first of all, non-selective monoamine oxidase inhibitors, which are pretty dangerous because they are going to affect both of monoamine A and B, right? Okay. So then we have in it uh, phenylzine, and then we have channel cipromine, and then we have ipronazid. Oh God, I don't know what's happening with my children today. Help. <coughs> okay, <coughs> sorry. So the adverse effects it is causing is hypertensive crisis, liver toxicity, and hemorrhage, right? As I said, this is dangerous. Why? Because it's going to you know, uh, like shut down all of the monoamine oxidases, right? Okay, when we talk about monoamine oxidase inhibitors, so we have two uh, categories. We have irreversible monoamine oxidase inhibitors and then we have reversible. When we have, when we talk about irreversible ones, we have uh, iprocoside and then we have phenoxypropazine. And then when we talk about reversible inhibitors, we have lazabimide, and then we have moclobimide. When we talk about monoamine oxidase B inhibitors, so these include uh, slagelin and ra rasagelin. So these monoamine oxidase inhibitors prove their clinical efficacy in the treatment of neurological disorders due to their selectivity and disease modifying effectiveness in monotherapy. How exactly they're going to do so, we'll talk about it, okay? So monoamine oxidase inhibitors may reversibly or irreversibly inactivate enzyme permitting neurotransmitter molecules to escape degradation and therefore they will accumulate within the synaptic lift, like I said. So this is believed to cause activation of norepinephrine and serotonin receptors and it may be responsible for indirect uh, antidepressant action of these drugs. Slagelin was first of all approved for Parkinson's disease, but later on uh, it was used to treat depression. Uh, use of monoamine oxidase inhibitors is very, very limited, like I said in the beginning of the lesson. Wait a minute. So now let's say here irreversible and reversible mean. Bitte, here irreversible and reversible means that if they would bind to monoamine oxidase, okay, they, then they would not detach themselves from it and it will be a permanent complex formation, okay. However, when we talk about reversible inhibitors, it means that a substrate complex would be formed with enzyme uh, and later on, um, you know, it would detach uh, from it and then uh, monoamine oxidase can do its work, okay. All right. Now, uh, use of monoamine oxidase inhibitors is now limited due to their complicated dietary restrictions required for, for patients taking them. So later on in the upcoming slides, we'll talk about how exactly monoamine oxidase inhibitors can affect a person taking, you know, daily diet. That is very much normal for us. Okay. Now, mechanism of action is that they form stable complexes with the enzyme, like I said. So, causing irreversible activation, this results in increased stores of epinephrine, serotonin, and dopamine within the neuron and subsequent diffusion of excess neurotransmitter into the synaptic space. Guys, if you remember, we did talk about that, you see, 
that uh, let's say we have two neurons okay and then uh, if you remember we talked about that the vesicles okay they are releasing the neurotransmitter within the uh, synaptic cleft right now just imagine that there is an enzyme called monoamine oxidase okay now this is going to cleave the excess of uh, biogenic amines okay so what you're going to do is this you're going to stop it so that more and more of norepinephrine will be released and more and more of other biogenic amines would be released in order to perform the action right so these drugs inhibit not only monoamine oxidase in brain but also in liver and gut that catalyze oxidative deamination of the drug it is very much important that you know that how exactly uh, this uh, this is happening this is happening because oxidation is happening right okay and potential uh, wait a minute wait okay so these drugs inhibit not only monoamine oxidase in brain but also in liver and gut that catalyze oxidative deamination of drugs and potentially toxic substances such as tyramine which is found in certain food so you see here we are talking about that this monoamine oxidase is actually cleaving tyramine <clears throat> now where exactly this tyramine is coming from is tyramine is present in several food right so when we we'll intake those food so tyramine would be there in our body and its metabolism is also done by monoamine oxidase okay all right so the monoamine oxidase inhibitors therefore show a high incidence of drug drug and drug food interaction flagellin administered as transdermal patch may produce less inhibition of drug and hepatic monoamine oxidase at low doses but it avoids first pass metabolism <clears throat> now actions uh, monoamine oxidase is fully inhibited after several days of treatment the antidepressant action of monoamine oxidase inhibitors like that of ssris and tcas is delayed several weeks guys you should know that almost all of the 99% of the antidepressants do not produce their effect instantly and they require few weeks to produce the action right then we have slagelin and trinil cypromine have amphetamine like stimulant effect that may produce agitation or insomnia when we will talk about therapeutic uses so as i said it is never a first choice of drug right it is always given as a um, alternate right when something is not happening then you give the drug okay so monoamine oxidase inhibitors are indicated for depressed patients who are unresponsive to or are unresponsive or allergic to tcas or who experience a strong anxiety patients with low psychomotor activity may benefit from the stimulant properties of monoamine oxidase inhibitors these drugs are also useful in the treatment of phobic states a special a uh, subcategory of depression called atypical depression may respond preferentially to monoamine oxidase inhibitors atypical depression is characterized by uh, liable mood rejection sensitivity and appetite disorders because of their risk for drug drug and drug food interaction monoamine oxidase inhibitors are considered to be last line agents in many treatment venues okay so this is always the last line when we we'll talk about pharmacokinetics so it is well absorbed orally it produces antidepressant effects again it requires 2 to 4 weeks um then enzyme regeneration when irreversibly inactivated varies but it usually occurs several weeks after termination of the drug thus when switching antidepressant agents a minimum of 2 weeks of delay must be allowed after termination of monoamine oxidase inhibitor therapy and the initiation of another antidepressant from any other class monoamine oxidase inhibitors are metabolized and excreted rapidly in urine uh, when we'll talk about adverse effects so you see uh 
Mona, I mean, Octodes inhibitor, you just kind of memorize it as a mnemonic that these are the mnemonics. And um, this is what adverse effects can be produced from M. We will talk about massive hypertensive crisis risk. And then A is for avoid tyramine. And then O is ODC drugs. Um, that is calcium and acid, uh, ac uh, acetaminophen <clears throat> and SEDS, okay? And then we have other antidepressants such as SRIs, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, and TCAs. Don't co don't co administer them. Uh, and then we have with all antidepressants, we have uh, an adverse effect. Is that it? That is it increases the suicide risk, right? Okay. Uh, when in the in the upcoming uh, in the previous slide here, we talked about massive hypertensive crisis, okay? And then we'll talk about avoid tyramine. We do understand the last three of the boxes, but I think we need to talk about the first two, that is why exactly and what exactly can cause massive hypertension? What is cause, why exactly should we avoid tyramine, okay? So as I said, tyramine is actually present in the food, okay? And what kind of food <coughs> would have tyramine? They would include sources like cheese, uh, red wine, and uh, several fish, okay? So you see these food contain tyramine. Now, what exactly will happen is as soon as tyramine would enter in the bloodstream, okay? Now, what will happen is this tyramine will get into the neuron from the uh, transporter, okay? And then this tyramine would actually get into the vesicle and kick off norepinephrine. Guys, I'm repeating. You see tyramine entered into the neuron to the norepinephrine transporter. It kicked off norepinephrine from its vesicle and then got inside the vesicle, okay? As a result, a lot of norepinephrine is now released within the uh, neuron, right? And then it would leak out um, through the transporter, okay? Uh, through the norepinephrine transporter, all right? And then this norepinephrine uh, would actually come and bind to alpha and beta receptors. And as a result, stimulant effect would be produced, right? Now what happens is, it could happen that this norepinephrine would be actively metabolized by monoamine oxidase. But you see, if you are eating cheese or taking red wine or taking fish, okay, and along with that, you are on monoamine oxidase inhibitors. So what will happen is that monoamine oxidase inhibitor would actually stop this monoamine to do its action. And as a result, the, meta the, the, the norepinephrine won't be metabolized at all, right? And it won't be, when it won't be metabolized at all, as a result, what will happen? Norepinephrine would be present in insane amount in the uh, synaptic cleft. And as a result, uh, hypertension may occur, right? Uh, secondly, you see tyramine itself can be metabolized in the previous slide, I told you that norepinephrine would be metabolizing by monoamine oxidase inhibitor, monoamine oxidases, right? Um, along with that, you should know that uh, tyramine itself can be oxidized, uh, can be metabolized by monoamine oxidase B isoenzyme, right? Into its metabolites and then no effect would be produced. However, if you're taking non selective monoamine oxidase inhibitors. As a result, of course, this would stop its action. And as a, as a result, tyramine levels would be, again, insanely high within your body. And as a result, severe, severe depression would happen, right? Okay, so tyramine is present in cheese, meat, chicken, liver, pickled, or smoked fish, red wine, and um, is normally inactivated by monoamine oxidase in the gut. Individuals receiving a monoamine oxidase inhibitor are unable to degrade tyramine obtained from diet. 
Tyramine causes the release of large amount of stored catecholamine from nerve terminal resulting in what is known as hypertensive crisis, right? So hypertensive crisis would, uh, would show symptoms of occipital headache, stiff neck, tachycardia, nausea, hypertension, cardiac arrhythmia, seizures, and possibly stroke. So patients must, de must therefore be educated to avoid food that contain tyramine. Then we have phentolamine and prasocin are helpful in the management of tyramine induced hypertension, right? Okay, so uh, again, like I said, all of these drugs, antidepressants are actually uh, promoting societal thoughts within the individuals, okay? So it is, if you remember, ever since we started the topic of antidepressants, we are talking that these medications would actually be producing societal thoughts. So the treatment with monoamine oxidase inhibitors may be dangerous in severely depressed patients with suicidal tendencies. Purposeful consumption of tyramine containing food is possibility. So other possible side effects of treatment with monoamine oxidase inhibitors include drowsiness, orthostatic hypertension, blurred vision, dry mouth, uh, dysuria, and constipation. Uh, monoamine oxidase inhibitor and SSRIs should not be co-administered due to risk of life-threatening serotonin syndrome. Both types of drugs require washout period of at least two weeks before the other type is administered with the exception of fluoxetine, which should be discontinued at least six weeks before a monoamine oxidase inhibitor is initiated. Uh, so combination of monoamine oxidase inhibitors and bupropion, uh, bu wait a minute, bupropion uh, can produce seizures. That is it, everybody. Thank you so much.